Hey, hey, hey. It sounds pretty good. No, it does not. <laughs> At all. If you haven't realized by the thumbnail and title, we're fixing this stupid exhaust that's on the car. And this is the exhaust we're putting on the E91. Ta da! Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy as hell. Ah. Low life, baby. Yeah, we're, we're definitely like hot boy. <laughs> status so most likely the suspension will come off this car and probably go on the E92 definitely not the E90 because E90 already has suspension yeah and this is gonna need some more of a comfortable ride suspension because STs yes because <laughs> this rides like shit also the wheel fitment is Fucking hideous. You got a good two feet gap right there. Yes. Those wheels for sale. If anybody wants them, let me know. Ooh, nice. Girthy. Hey. Watch the limited one out of 50. Yeah, I wasn't going to walk around, but no. <laughs> VRSF, you gave it away. It's the E90's favorite go-to exhaust system. 90 per, 90% of E90 335 owners have this exhaust right here. Yeah. I just decided to make a video since it's got a hump in the back seat. It's not a, it's not an E90. Yeah. It's missing, it's missing the, this area. Yeah. The E90's. Mine has it. Damn, dude, those tints are black. It's like black paint in the rear mirror. Really? Looks like black paint. Here, come look behind me. Hit the camera. It's like black paint. <laughs> yes. I did 5% so you can't see me while I'm smoking, you know? Because it's part of the smoke. Ew. Yeah, so it smokes because the turbos are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen. No, he's talking I'm about the turbos. Hot, okay? What do we have here? <laughs> Sick. Look at the welds, though. Sick. Some fed fence post piping. That's what it looks like though. Sort of thing going on. Um, I can already see one issue here. With the VRSF exhaust. There's no place for the muffler to mount. It's a different rear end here. Yeah. We only have one hanger here. And that's about it. Huh. So we might have to do some fabrication to make this work. <laughs> Which this I guy, have. This guy's been itching to use his uh, new welder. Yes. I have a new welder and I kind of want to use it. So this gives me a perfect opportunity to use it. I wonder if they ripped off the existing hangers <clears> over there. <throat> well, it might work. There's supposed to be something here. Oh. And there isn't. Uh, so we're gonna just install it and then see what happens as far as the rear section. Yeah. The front section is the same. You got, you know, McDonald's straws all the way down and then it's like a... Secondary cat's deleted. Secondary cat deleted, but the, here it's like a, you know, a It's straight, a sharp point. Yeah, it's a sharp point. Look a at straight it. straight 45 going on it's here. It's great for exhaust gases. Not sure what... What, what that what that is? It's no smooth flow going on there. Uh, 
up here, it's the same. So throughout the whole area, it's pretty much the same exhaust until you get to the rear. And the rear only has one hanger, which is right here. And I'm guessing since 328s have a dual exit and it's a giant muffler, the muffler That's what has it a was, hanger yeah. here. That's what it was. Yeah, correct. This is a 328, so it doesn't have... Yeah, 328 twin turbo. <laughs> N52. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, I guess, take off this McDonald's dry exhaust and we'll uh, attempt to put this one on. Yeah. Once we open it. Yeah. Cheers. That might be a good thing to mention. The car has downpipes. So we have Versif downpipes. Versif downpipes. Versif. Which, by the way, I know they've been out of stock for a while. They're coming back in stock mid-August. So if you guys are interested in putting a pre-order in, we do sell that. You can just check us out on our website, vehiclevirals.com. We'll yeah. have those in stock in August. Um, this car also has inlets, outlets, I don't know what outlets those are, but they look beefy. Hmm. Beefy. But it's got also 17T turbos that are blown to shit, because I can see it right here. Can't really see it on camera, but the center cartridge area is just done. Uh, BRSF intercooler. Seven and a half. VRSF charge pipe. VRSF down pipe, like you said. Arm inlets. DC coilovers, which ride like <laughs> shit. I just don't think it's meant for the E91, E93 because of the extra weight. Yeah. I had a similar experience on the E93. It just didn't ride very well. Well, I've. You either got to put like stiffer springs or just change out the system altogether. No, I think it needs slighter, uh, not lighter. Softer? Uh, softer springs. Well, maybe they put too heavy, uh, too too stiff. Because mine were too, I don't know what they were at my 93. It just wasn't right. I used a E92 12, 12K springs or whatever, and it just, it wasn't it. It wasn't hitting right. It wasn't it. Uh, Everything rattled inside of the interior for that reason. Well, I've driven an E92 and E90 on BCs. It's, uh, no, it's not, it's not good. I don't know what it is about them, but it's just not good. I mean, they were good on your F30. F30 was different. It was a lot comfortable, uh, a lot more comfortable than an E90 chassis, but... I think they just dialed in to be a little bit stiffer on the E90 for whatever reason. I mean, the chassis overall is already stiffer than F30. Yeah. Excitement. I don't know if, if you call it excitement. <laughs> we both... I we mean, both been like... so many... So many <laughs> Uh, VRSF exhaust, so <laughs> I just did an install, what, like two days ago? Yeah. And, and we still have a, I think we still have one on the shelf there ready to be installed on somebody else's car. That one's getting uh, installed on a clean black E90. Very clean. With very, very low miles for an E90. Ta-da! Wow. Ta-da! So, tips, I, I think the tips are the only thing that kind of disappoint me. They're not big enough. They're not big enough. Sometimes they don't really look that good on an M-Sport. Yeah. Their end. So, we'll try them out. And the good thing is that they're not welded on. You can always swap them out. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll try them out, see how it looks, and then... If I change my mind, I'll probably go to like a four inch tip. Yeah. Two four inch tips. Yeah. Um, besides that, three and a half inch piping, which excites me the most. Jizz. <laughs> um, I did go with the street version because I'm not trying to be ridiculously loud. Although, it would be cool to be loud, but I kind of want it to be civil-ish. My E93 was not civil with the with the race. Yeah, but then you added a resonator. It was better, but that automatic high diff ratio at 70 miles an hour, drone, oh, yes, the resonator made it better. But without the resonator, it's really tough unless you really like loud cars. Yeah, so... 
I also ran this one for a few months and I actually liked it a lot. Once you break in the muffler after a few days, it actually gets pretty loud, but it's not obnoxious. What he said. Yeah. What he said. Exactly what he said. We're trying to get rid of that disgustingness <laughs> to switch to something that's more daily driver friendly. If you don't like the loudness of this, you can also add a resonator to the, no, not this pipe. This pipe. You remember I did that too? Yeah. And it actually sounded pretty good. So, with the resonator, it actually gets rid of, I guess, most of the drone. Because there is a little bit of drone, I think. With the, with the street version. Right? Barely, but I it's guess... Only, it's only noticeable at like certain RPM and if you sit in a certain RPM. Yeah. But for the most part, street version is the best version as far as loud enough but also quiet enough and the cold start doesn't sound you know crazy but if you have a single turbo car i'll trace all day with a resonator there's just something about a single turbo car that doesn't sound it doesn't i think single turbos deserve a race <laughs> they just they just don't sound that like they don't have that rasp yeah they don't have the rasp with twins you're gonna have rasp no matter what exhaust you put on unless you have a muffler resonator, you know, what kind of, whatever kind of combination goes on. Well. So we're just gonna take off this piece of shit exhaust and then we'll show you guys afterwards. So since we're already here, I decided to, you know, check the car. Since last time when I drove the car, it was making like weird noise in the rear. So I know the exact issue, which is, you know, a cheap fix but it's like the stupidest mistake you can make on this you know, <laughs> car. So, <clears throat> you can't tell on video, but this drive shaft is supposed to be straight. When I'm looking at it right now, it looks like my elbow, like this. So, when it rotates, naturally it's gonna go, you know. I have some music right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go like that. So, you can see it. You can see it's like bent. Bent. It's bent. It's not straight. And this is going down, and then that's like straightening up a little bit. It's hard so, to see. But. As if you can see right here, all of this grease coming out is from this joint. So there was tension here, obviously, and look at this mount. That's all grease. Hey, recycle been, that, bro. It's been doing it for a decent amount of time. And that is because somebody, when they were putting the drive shaft in, they put the center support bearing upside down. So, watch this. Now, the drive line is straight, which shouldn't, in theory, cause this and possibly wear your drive shaft out. This is the second car I see this in the same shop. First car was Carlos's car because it was done by somebody. They did a clutch, put the drive shaft upside down, and as soon as he hit it in first and second gear, it was like. Da -da 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 -da. Hmm. So, yeah, I guess I kind of fixed something while I was down here. But we're not going to put the heat shield back on because I want to see if this splatters more. And if it does, then we're going to have to change the drive shaft to the one that's over there from Christian's car. Yep, but it's over there. I don't know if manual and auto is the same. Yeah, we'll find out. Because I was going to do a full diff swap. And just swap your diff in there, but then I was like, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Yeah, so, the ratio is different. The ratio is different. The DSC will freak out, the automatic transmission will freak out, and it's gonna throw a bunch of faults. So we're not gonna do that. Yeah. But we're gonna leave off the heat shield. I mean, you don't have a heat shield on your car. I don't have a heat shield on my car either. So we're gonna leave that off for now. Figure out if this is bad. If it is bad, then we'll replace it. 
but in the meanwhile, we'll continue to install. Dude, nice mod. Sick. So, <laughs> so, since this was a 328 and it didn't have the hanger, I took off a hanger in the middle where it connects to the differential 19 mil whatever bolts, nuts, things. Took them off since we don't need them for the VRSF system. Bent it to where it's straight because it's like this from factory. Curved. So now it sits like this. Curved. Yeah. Versus straight. So now it sits like this. And then I took the existing bolt out of the bumper support or the crash bar and then bolted in there. So now we're gonna test out one side and see where the tip ends up. Oh yeah. And then go from there. And if that works, then we'll modify this one, meaning bend it straight, cut the top off because it does interfere with the bolt, and then we'll mount it on. And I did put some washers behind it as well, so it offsets it a little bit. So test try number one. By the way, if you have a 335, you don't have to do any of this crap. Yeah. It just bolts right on. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do that with a 335. This is only for 328 wagons if you have an M54 swap. So that's how it's going to sit. I think. Looks straight on this side. How about now? Does that look better? Yeah, looks good. True. All right, rev it. <laughs> yes. Thanks for showing us the installation, bro. Uh, I was trying to make sure that it fits, because, like I said, this is a weird chassis. So, confirmed. It, it fits. fits. And for you guys wondering, the exhaust tips are lined up. So there's still adjustment. VRSF has made some updates over the years, I guess, because they're not crooked like they used to be. They actually look very good. Yeah, so there's still adjustment, and then you can, if you want to be, you know, really a hot boy, stick out your tips, you can stick out your tips. This one is just not as tight yet. But in my case, they're going to go all the way in, so they don't stick out. This side, we do this same thing as far as the bending the exhaust hanger and then putting it on all kinds of stuff but as far as having supports there the hanger is on i did put this portion on but it's not in its final position obviously because it's still moving around so and i just attached the hanger over here just to get an idea of where the muffler is going to sit and make sure it sits like somewhat straight so we can adjust it. But we have to do the rest and fuck that. I'm not doing that today. <laughs> That's going to be tomorrow. But Which is in the same video though. Yeah, it's going to be in the same video. But I'm just saying, I'm going to be wearing a different shirt. Maybe the same shirt. And you're going to be looking less sweaty. Yeah. Maybe I'll just come in without showering. Bet. I'm doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be marinated very well. Can you imagine if videos picked up scent and like when you publish the video, people yeah. get the full experience? <laughs> Jeez. Jeez, like button. <laughs> um, but yeah, confirmed E91. It does fit. So if you have an N54 swap and your E91, I'd say this is the exhaust system for you. I don't know how many people are running an E91 with an N54. Just saying. I mean, that's besides the point. That's a split percentage. Yeah, that's besides the point. <laughs> but this might be the only DIY that you will find. Yeah. But if you're also in Europe, they do have 335s. Yeah, but they don't have to worry about the modification stuff. Maybe. I don't know. But it does fit. Yeah. That's all I know. So get your VRSF exhaust right here. Right here. Right here. It's going to be on the screen. Yeah. And then it's also going to be in the description. Yeah, we got them in stock, bro. Ready to ship. Uh, ready ready to ship. I can't even speak. We need to go home. <laughs> All right, guys. So <clears throat> it is the next day. 
Um, we have a little bit left as far as the exhaust goes. We need to put the midsection on and also the collector for the downpipes, which center section is right here. That's still in the box. And then we have some clamps and the miscellaneous hardware for like the center brace, which I don't know if I'm going to use, but we'll see how the exhaust fits. So I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of the exhaust and get you some exhaust clips. Everything is on. We got the tips on. I do still have to adjust these because they're not perfect yet. Uh, I also didn't put this hanger on because this area is pretty close. So I just left it off. It's pretty sturdy, so it doesn't really need it. Clamp on here, clamp here, and then we have the downpipe connection to the VRSF downpipes. So the full system is installed and I also put these spacers on here because they do provide those with the kit. Um, besides that, it's ready to start. So let's hear the first cold start, I should say. makes weird noises from the induction because I think the inlet was installed incorrectly. Sounds like an N55. So it makes like duck noises when you're like giving it the beans. Let's hear it. <laughs> wow! Do you hear that? Yeah, I heard like three different sounds. Exactly. There's like a whining sound. That's the inlet. And There's then, an exhaust. Yep. And there's that duck you're talking about, or whatever. Which is the blow-off valve. Yeah. So, it definitely needs to be addressed, and I think that's the reason why the turbo is blue, because something is not adding up with the inlets, and, you know, there's also no catch can on this car, and the PCV is disconnected. So, all that plays an effect as far as the turbo is being blown. It doesn't smoke as much now, so maybe I can... You got rid of all the deposits. Yeah, maybe maybe I can put everything back on correctly and the turbos are still good, but I don't think so. I just think because you have such a big back on this car, you're not going to hear a lot of exhaust sound inside anyways. Yeah. Like but Inside, a, it's, not, it's not bad. It does, no, it doesn't sound bad. It actually sounds pretty good and it's comfortable. I think that's the most important thing for a daily driver. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like, it sounds like a, it sounds like a wet fart. <laughs> Ooh, it was gonna, it was starting to dance a little bit. A little bit, not too much. I still have traction on actually. Oh. And we're actually going to Taco Bell to refill. 